Next up, it was one of the worst incidents of racial violence in American history, and yet you won't find a word about the Tulsa massacre in most American history books. Built by the children of slaves in the early days of Jim Crow, Tulsa's Greenwood neighborhood had flourished for years, earning the nickname Black Wall Street. But one night in 1921, a white mob descended on Greenwood, killing as many as 300 people, burning around 35 blocks to the ground, including hundreds of black homes and businesses. I remember the people coming in, white people coming into our house with torches, setting the curtains on fire and setting our house on fire. The Lord just strengthened me, but my husband was... He was so tender. He just broke down. He said, baby, we've lost everything we had. Going back to T-Town, a documentary from GBH's American Experience tells the story of Greenwood's hard-earned prosperity, its destruction, and how the neighborhood rose from the ashes. It first aired close to 30 years ago, and tonight it's getting an encore showing in honor of Black History Month on the 100th anniversary of the massacre. The film's writer, who used to co-host the show much like this one at WGBH, now GBH, Carmen Fields joins me now. Carmen, congratulations, and it's really good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I am more than excited that the film is being rebroadcast. Yeah, that's that's two of us. Describe Greenwood, what it was like prior to that night, May 31st of 1921, Carmen. Uh, well, as it's been indicated, it was uh, became known as the Black Wall Street. There were dozens, if not scores, of businesses on both sides of the street, cleaners, hotels, chili parlors, restaurants, drugstores, haberdasheries, etc. It was a, a completely insulated, insular community where anything you needed, you could find right there. And the reason for that is because segregation was so rigid and uh, it was dangerous to move outside the community. But apparently the prosperity in that community uh, caused jealousy and resentment in the white community. What, what exactly happened on May 31st of 1921, Carmen? According to uh, those witnesses that are featured in the, the film, a young African-American uh, man had gone into a department store. Uh, he was a worker or something of that nature and uh, got on, went to get on an elevator and brushed against uh, a white elevator operator, young lady, uh, who took offense to it. And next thing you know, he's arrested and word spreads through town. There was going to be a lynching that night. And the black men of the community armed themselves and went to the jail to prevent uh, the lynching. And then essentially for the next day or so was what I described, a looting, uh, yes. uh, burning, Nobody murdering knows. of... Nobody knows who fired the first shot, but once a shot was heard, it was on, and it was followed by looting, burning. Uh, uh, one of the witnesses says they were firing from airplanes, and I can remember correcting someone who maintained that Philadelphia and the MOVE incident was the first time a community had been bombed, and there are some that uh, maintain that Tulsa was the first time that that had happened, that uh, military and airplanes were dropping incendiary devices on the community. Carmen, was anyone ever charged with a crime for any never, of this? Never, never, never. Uh, nobody, and nobody was arrested, nobody was charged, no one was held into account. You know, and one of the amazing part, there are many amazing parts of the story, and let me just say the oral part of the history the, the people who uh, are spoken to in the film are as powerful a group of people as I've ever encountered in an hour-long documentary in my life, every single one of them. And it, as a result, it's not a surprise to hear there was a commitment in that community, despite the devastation and the horror, to rebuild. But even after the massacre, the white leadership of the community did everything they could, changing building codes, that sort of thing, to make it near impossible, but they did succeed in rebuilding, they correct? Did, they did succeed and rebuilt and, uh, and flourished uh, well into the 50s, 
early 60s, but uh, some say that the blessing, if you will, of integration was bittersweet because it meant that people were free then to move outside of the community, live anywhere they wanted to, shop anywhere they wanted to, and the black community, that and urban renewal, uh, it's never been able to recover completely. You know, Carmen, I mentioned to you right before we uh, did this interview that I, I was embarrassed about my lack of knowledge of this until, of all people, Donald Trump had a proposed rally on Juneteenth in Tulsa, and then that history became known to us. You were a Tulsa kid. Growing up, what did you know about what had happened those nights in 1921? Very, very, very little. It was whispered about. It was... Uh, 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 kept a secret, uh, and if it was mentioned, it was mentioned in hushed tones, uh, and it really wasn't until, uh, with the help of the producers, Sam Pollard and Joyce Vaughn, that we were able to delve more closely into that history and uh, bring it to light. And if it's anything I'm proud about, or I'm most proud about many things, but the fact that the film animated a whole new opening of eyes to what had happened. It is now a part of the curriculum for Oklahoma public schools. It was not, oh, even during, during my day, it was not. Uh, it uh, animated uh, oral history with some of those survivors and others uh, there, and it's uh, opened a whole new era of enlightenment, if you will. By the way, Pollard is the man behind the MLK FBI film, is he yes, not? That yes. just mm -hmm. came out, which is spectacular as well. I want to refocus on what you said a minute ago. One of the most powerful parts of the film is when that gentleman says what you just said, is we survived X, we survived this massacre. What we couldn't survive was integration. And mm -hmm. flesh that out just a minute for us, if you could. Well, uh, it... it it again, besides integration, there was also urban renewal. And many black people right. refer to that as urban removal because the super highways that often bisected not just Tulsa, but African American communities around the country under the guise of improvement. And that uh, destroyed again many of the businesses, and they were never able to recover. Uh, and now I was reading, I guess, two, three weeks ago, a Washington Post, a long Washington Post article about the difficulty of black developers in having access to capital or even the ability to yeah. opportunity to buy the land and uh, build on the legacy of Greenwood. It's now in the hands of a few very powerful white people. You know, Carmen, the film grabs you right away with some incredibly spectacular music at the opening. Could you tell me who composed and performed the music in your film? That music, I am proud to say, is from the Ernie Fields Orchestra. Ernie Fields is my father. And that uh, the title comes from the song T-Town Blues that he wrote and recorded in New York City in 1939. And part well, of the lyrics, that I'm one. going back to T-Town to get my women in line. I'm going back to T-Town. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, we're going to play a little bit. I can see the pride in your face. We're going to play a little bit in a minute. And I just want to tell you, this. I wish I had seen this when it first came out in 93, but everybody should watch tonight. It is spectacular, and congratulations on the work. Thank you. I'm very proud of it. Thank you very much. You can watch Gone Back to T-Town tonight at 8. That's right here on GBH2 and online at pbs.org slash American Experience.